over the last couple of videos, I have done my best to showcase a variety of crap anime. Anime that I believe to be horrible for one reason or another. Some are awful for a distinct lack of cohesive storytelling, others because perhaps they rely too heavily on their star power to get them noticed, and of course, some that try to distract you from the shit by giving you something else that's pretty to look at. So I figured one of the best ways to finish off this review week of awful was to showcase an anime that, to some extent, has all of these problems. Not only that, but it must be recent. Recent enough to prove that anime in general has not fully learned from the mistakes of the past and that there is still plenty of opportunity for the worst anime ever to have not even been made yet. Thus, my journey brings us to 2016, where a series written by fairly renowned author contains a plot that doubles in on itself trying to sound intelligent and cool while covering up its mistakes with panty shots and overly toned female bodies. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Okada, and today on Glass Reflection, Big Order. Let's jam. <laughs> Big Order is an anime that fails for a lot of reasons, but the one that I want to shine a spotlight over over the course of this video is uh, the absolutely tragic waste of potential. The series takes place in a version of the world which has suffered a, a calamity ten years prior, one that resulted in the deaths of millions, but also brought about the appearance of orders. People with supernatural powers granted by their wishes for various things. As it is explained, our hero Eiji, if you want to call him a hero, I guess, was the first order to be given any power, and his wish is what caused said destruction ten years ago. At least that's what he believes. A floating pink-haired girl named Daisy is the one who granted Eiji his wish, but she appears later and more or less tells Eiji flat out that the destruction was not his fault. But because he can't remember anything properly, it's a plot point that gets forgotten about until it's convenient. You'll find that that becomes a reoccurring theme with plot points in this show, by the by. But eventually, A.G. decides to actually man up and start using his powers, which apparently is the ability to walk around and add space to his domain. Anything within his domain he has absolute control over, like some kind of god. And this is important because despite it being such an overpowered ability, it is utterly wasted on a character like Eiji who never uses it to its full potential. An immortal order assassin named Rin appears, but she gets trapped in Eiji's domain and ordered to never harm him, turning her from a deadly villain into a comical Yandere who's there for some cheap laughs and the occasional panty shot. She's really not all that relevant to the plot other than to be some figure in a kind of three four-way romance that the show tries to justify rin's character seems to be one that's slipped into the story because someone looked at future diary and thought you know gasai was the greatest character ever therefore a recreation of her in this universe would work perfectly fine this revelation however explains much of the problems with the plot from that point on, the story progresses like a cliché, at least that's what I, I, I feel like it wanted to do. Honestly though, it's proceeding more like what someone thought a cliché was supposed to be. It's slightly off from the norm though, but not in a way that makes sense. Big Order is similar to Future Diary because its plot is full of big ideas and interesting twists, but doesn't know how to act on them worth a damn. Future Diary was just a lot better at at hiding its flaws stealthily, while Big Order just goes all in and covers up its mistakes in even more fan service. Like, none of our character motivations make any sense. AG seems to be acting to save his half-sister, despite knowing that she has a terminal disease that would have killed her in six months, and he laments the loss of his normal life because once she had died, everything would have been fine, but then he proceeds to do everything he can to save her, it, it just boggles the mind, really. Rin continually tries to kill Eiji despite the order that she was given not to, which means that she fails horribly every time, and most of the villains are not much more than token superpower of the weak type shonen combatants who wield orders like enemy stands, but with 
much less personality and style than any JoJo villain would. Every time a new order user is introduced, their power is quickly explained, but the explanations are usually vague, leaving a lot of wiggle room for what the actual boundaries of their abilities are. Normally, this could be used to, to great effect in gotcha moments against one another, but often things are just left vague without explanation. Usually because the vast majority of battles are interrupted by another order user, and most fights never actually have resolutions. But hey, at least there's a hot spring scene. Right, guys? Right? Why am I bothering at this point? Like, seriously, what the hell? Worse is, as I mentioned, despite AEG having one of the most overpowered abilities in the whole show, he barely uses it all that much. Like, even when he does, it's rarely effective. You think that someone with his powers would be trying to increase the size of his domain as soon and as much as possible and turn everybody in it into obedient puppets, at least until his goals were completed. Like this is the, the light Yagami and the Lelouch way of doing things, right? But in less than three episodes, Eiji gets confronted by 10 order users who get trapped in his domain, get dominated by him, yet for some reason don't listen to his demands and quite quickly keep him in the dark and use him as a puppet for their means, and he goes along with it. You would never see Lelouch use a Gios on someone and, and then have them not follow his orders. Yet, with AG, it happens all the time with little explanation as to why. In fact, keeping AG in the dark the whole show has the added benefit of keeping the audience in the dark. We spend the entire series not really knowing what's going on, desperately hoping for everything to make sense in the end because of some piece of the puzzle that the plot was just holding back. Considering though how it's been handling itself, the result should be obvious. There's no grand plan. Our hero will just rush in blindly, stupidly, and somehow survive due to convenient reasons that will never be fully explained, and we're just supposed to go along with it. That's just the way things are. Deal with it or leave. Like the Shrine Maiden saying that if her ribbon is touched by a man, she will get pregnant followed by her becoming instantly pregnant when AG touches her ribbon. She apparently is not actually pregnant, as this ribbon baby disappears by the next episode with not too much explanation, but it's just one of the many examples of things that just happen for no rhyme or reason. So I suppose if that's something that doesn't really bother you at all, and you're just in it for the tits, then by all means, have at it with this series. You are a far more tolerant person than I am. <sighs> Ultimately, this... This is a series that tries to come off as well thought out and intricate, despite the opposite being true. Also, at the same time, it doesn't have much confidence in itself and decides to use fan service as a way to keep the audience engaged. An insulting tactic, honestly. <sighs> is Big Order the worst anime ever? No. No. But it contains so many little hints of possible greatness before dashing all your hopes into the wind. Which is fine apparently because that's the same wind that's causing upskirts and panty shots. It is not a good show. It is passable only if you like train wrecks. I know I've used that analogy a lot recently, or at least I feel like I have, but it just so happens that I decided to review a bunch of train wrecks back to back, so really I have myself to blame. Or I could blame Obby. It was his idea originally. But it's all over now. Because I'm making it over. Big Order, no surprise, gets a fuck it rating for me. Like, I, I, I don't think that, that anything else could have really been expected. If you want to watch something better, I understand, by the way, go and pick up a copy of, like, Elfin Lead. At least that train wreck is a rite of passage for some anime fans. Hell, you know, just go and watch Code Geass. Because it's quite obvious that that's what this show would have been if it was actually good. So those are my alternate anime recommendations. Yeah, that's done. Oh, as always, thank you, a very big thank you to all my patrons who help out make these videos possible. Especially Bing Theo, Victor Ekmark, Yunru Dover Queen, Jacob Parkin, Joshua Garcia, Calhoun Boy, Robert Chumzai, and Siri Yamiko, because you guys are amazing. And now I need to, like, break down and cry or something. I need some kind of mental release. I have sat through five horrible anime with very few redeeming qualities, right? And I feel like I'm losing it. Just a bit. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go one more day. I need a palate cleanser, and I'm sure you do too after this review week. 
of awful. I think we all need something a little mindless and exceedingly more entertaining to keep our spirits up as we finish off this year and hope for a good 2018. And so until then, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty.